adjourned to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees, May 6, 2019. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Kelly, would you let the record show that we are all present? Uh, moving on to the approval of the consent agenda. Has anyone had a chance to read through? Um, actually, John, if I could pull off the uh, number five, the section 36 utility easements for discussion. Okay. I'll support. I guess that would be 11 um, M. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. All right, motion to be in order to approve the consent agenda with that one item pulled. Oh, I thought that was. Yeah, I thought that was. Is that going to be Chris. official? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Went on to the approval of the agenda. Any additions or deletions? I'll approve the agenda with the item 11 ITC that was taken off the consent. Um, Michelle, could I, uh, could I sure. also add an item to just for discussion at the, the end? And um, I don't know what we can call it, but I guess it would be 11 N, but it would be just general discussion on. Uh, uh, deadlines for getting information into the packets. Okay. Um. I'll support that if that needs to be supported. Are you good with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so we have a motion. Can you second that, please? Yes. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to the announcements and communications. <coughs> Anyone have anything? Yes, I do. Um, I would like to thank uh, Jessica Mitty, who um, is from the South Lion First United Methodist Church. And every year they do a, the church has left the building. And this year we were lucky enough to be recipients of their time on Sunday for a couple of hours to clean up our cemetery in New Hudson. So they did a beautiful job and I'd like to say thank you to them. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one, we're going to move on to the call to the public. This is when you can stand up and talk about anything not agenda related. Come on up. Bob Ziegler with uh, South Lion Area Youth Assistance. Sharon Conrad, I'm a board member. Yeah, and we just wanted to come here and thank the trustees for the financial support and the also the moral support of the organization. And uh, just to highlight a few of our programs, we have a full-time caseworker counseling the young people. In case they get into trouble, they can be free referred to our office, and they, we meet with she meets with the family and the child. And this is a way of preventing them from getting into further trouble. And uh, the, the, uh, the, co the benefit of this is it's about 90% of these people that have been involved with youth assistance never are, commit another crime. They're never in the system again. We also have a mentoring program with about 11 children as matched to um, a, an older adult. And it's like a big brother, big sister program. And we're always looking for mentors. So if anyone is interested, we could really use the help on Especially that. Especially the males. Especially <laughs> the males. We, need, we have three young boys that could use a male mentor. Mm -hmm. and it takes about an hour a week is what we figure is the time, probably a little more. But to just spend some time to help them, usually the, the male figure is not in or around anymore. And um, so it's a very, very big help. And then our summer enrichment program coming up in the summer for kids to do something in the summer, but it's a self-confidence building program. They develop a play, put on a play, and everyone has a part in it. So it gives them self-confidence, which helps them as they get older into high school. 
And our uh, volunteer recognition program is coming up in May. You'll be re receiving an invitation to come and join us to um, recognize the young people that have volunteered in the community. And it's a very nice program. And uh, we have usually about 80 children that are recognized at that. And if you have any questions, we're glad to answer them. You said that mentoring was one hour per week? About an hour a week. Okay. You, what we do is we have, it's a, a, what you do is you contact the office, you go through a training program and a, and a uh, clearance program so that we make sure that you're safe mm -hmm. to be with children. Sure. And then you, you set up a time to meet with the child and do something, maybe go out to lunch or go out to dinner, go bowling, mm. just sit and visit. It's just some time with the child so that the child has an, a person that is an adult that gives them some mentoring. Mm -hmm. Any, Any other questions? questions? Okay, thank, thank you very you much. Thank Thanks for thank coming you. on. Good to see you, Bob. <clears throat> okay, anyone else? Stand up. All right, we're gonna move on to reports, uh, DDA. Yep, good evening, everyone. Um, okay, sir, first of all, I wanted to announce that next Tuesday, May 14th, the DDA will be hosting the first of two informational meetings to be required to be held each year. These meetings are open to the public. The presentation will be made on the DDA vision plan, a recap of the capital improvement projects, the 2019 budget, update on top priority projects, the sharing of special event information, and also volunteer opportunities. This meeting will be from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. with a regular DDA meeting starting at 7 p.m. Um, also, I wanted to report that I'll be attending the Michigan Downtown Association workshop um, up in Petoskey on May 30th and 31st. The topic of this workshop is the value of local developers. Topics are um, range from concept to reality, creative insight into making development projects happen in your downtown, attracting local investment, and real success stories. Also, we have received um, the industrial site summary from the MEDC, and our site team met last week to review that summary that was provided by the consultants hired by the Michigan Economic Development um, Corporation. And um, we did provide them with some feedback. Um, I'll also be attending a meeting in Lansing next week um, as a follow-up to this as well. We're trying to hone all of the details in this recap that was put together to highlight the Wallbridge property so that we can develop that property. Um, we're also looking to submit a grant application to the MEDC. Um, our team met on that as well. This is a, an opportunity for, for us to secure some funding for road improvements along South Hill. This would be improvements to South Hill that was not covered under the Category A grant that we received, but would be beneficial to the Wallbridge developments um, it was also an item that was highlighted in this site summary as being an opportunity for us to make those improvements so that the site would be more attractive for development. And that would con conclude my report. Great. Any questions for Tina? Okay, moving on. Chief and Spring Tech. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Perfect. Tonight, uh, we have uh, two firefighters that have met all of their probationary requirements over the last year and are becoming firefighters with the Lyon Township Fire Department. So the first one is, is Greg DeSanta, and he's joined here by his wife, Joanne, <coughs> and uh, their son, Adam, and daughter, Whitney. <laughs> and I would like them to come up. Uh, Whitney is going to pin uh, the badge on her dad's uh, uniform. So. Whitney and Greg. I guess I have to present the badge to you. Don't, <laughs> don't <hope. laughs> Greg was one of those that just decided uh, he wanted something different. He 
uh, has a business degree from Michigan State and wanted to serve his community, and he's been a tremendous asset since he's been here. Fantastic. Uh, also, we'll, uh, Emma Corticus is uh, joined here by, just raise your hands or stand up. Um, <laughs> so I'll <laughs> announce you. Okay. So yes, Mike you is uh, her dad, Tanya, her stepmom, Sophia, her sister, Michael, her grandpa, Jody, her mom, James, her stepdad, Nicholas, her brother, and Charlie, her boyfriend. Yay! All right. Wow. <laughs> Is there anyone who are not related to Emma? <laughs> <laughs> so her dad, Mike, is going to uh, pin <clears throat> Emma's badge on her. Emma's also a student at OCC, and she's about to finish her uh, firefighter technology degree. Wow. Nice. Both great additions to the fire department, and, and we should be proud of them. And that concludes my report. Thank you very Precious much. And we are very proud of the fire department. <clears throat> Don't even think twice. <laughs> Thank you guys, all of you guys. You guys do great work. Thank you so much for protecting our citizens. Okay, moving on. Lieutenant Venus? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, last month uh, at the South Lion Easter Egg Hunt, we had a deputy go over. Even though the weather conditions weren't that great, they still did hold it. And they had some kids show up, so but we did have somebody there along with the fire department, I believe. And this is the time of year when I start reminding everybody to make sure that they lock their cars when they park out uh, in front of their house. This is usually when we start seeing a rise in the larcenies from the vehicles and. Uh, they only target unlocked cars. They just walk through the neighborhood and check to see whose car's unlocked and they go in and see what they can grab and they'll take as little as just change in a, in a cup holder or whatever. But last year, um, we seen a drop in them. So uh, it's on a decline a little bit, but I think people are starting, to, are starting to lock their cars a little more and make sure their garages are shut. So with that, that's, that's all great. I have for this month unless anybody has any questions. I just wanted to thank Lieutenant Venus because I'd passed along some complaints uh, about speeding in neighborhoods and you've you've kind of moved some people in and out of areas to kind of try to help kind of curtail that. And a question that I was asked is one that you and I had briefly discussed a while ago, which is um, uh, do we have a radar trailer? And the answer is no. And the answer is that's sort of like old technology. It's sort of pain. You don't have anywhere to really store it. It's hard to move around, but they have other uh, more portable signage that uh, can be chained to or attached temporarily to street signs and right. I guess I would like to maybe ask if we could potentially look at purchasing one of those and have it moved around to different possibly problem areas of the township just to kind of remind drivers that you know the speed limit is what it is they are much um, cheaper because they're smaller yeah, they're right. only probably the size mm -hmm. of the of this laptop if you were to uh, long ways right and it really it doesn't I don't believe that uh, some of them don't provide data <clears throat> like the other units did okay but what it does is when you're speeding if you are over the speed limit a, a strobe light goes off sure which grabs your attention sure Novi has one they just these are this is something that's fairly new okay and then it tells you that you're speeding and tells you to slow down or what you can program it to do different <clears> things <throat> so they are they are I haven't looked at the pricing okay. of them however I have asked and they are considerably cheaper than the uh, uh, trailered ones yeah I mean I, I would personally uh, think it might be nice to try to pick one up and then advertise that to, Easy to install uh, yep. the neighborhoods and residential areas around uh, the township um, that we have it and they can request it and we can potentially move yep. it around and help to address some uh, I'll check speeding into that issues around town. Get yeah. some prices and we'll sure. get it on the agenda and hopefully sure. we can get one. Because they, they are much easier, they're smaller, they're easier to set up. And yeah, but the trailer seems a little dangerous too. It's kind of stuck in the road too. Yeah, it's got to be in traffic a little bit before it can do what it's supposed to do. You don't see do, many so of those anymore. No, Everybody's probably. going to the smaller, uh, they can mount it to a tree. You can mount it to a, tra uh, a speed limit sign. You can mount sure. it to a, uh, a curve sign, something sure. that's just in an area where, where you're having problems. So yeah. they're relatively easy to use. Okay. 
We, I used, it. we yep. used to have one. Yeah. You know, we purchased it in the past with and we shared it with Highland Township, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. just an FYI, and it was the bigger the trailer. model. Yeah, yeah, the trailer one. And so we had it for six months and then they had it for six okay. months. So it, I think it was pricey back yeah, then. Yeah, those so were we pretty expensive. I we shared that yeah. cost. Yeah. That's because they, they, they had them when they first developed them. They, they would keep, they would track data. You could plug it into a computer sure. and it'll shoot you how many cars went through, what the average speed of the day was, the time sure. of the, what, it just had a lot of things that you could do mm -hmm. that nobody really, nobody would ask for that stuff. They just sure. wanted something there to deter the uh, speeders. Sure. And it worked. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, you know. It's cumbersome, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. So we'll look it. into you. it. Okay, thank All you. Right. Thank you. I do. Moving on, planning commission. Okay, there were two planning commissions in the month of April. The first one was April 8th, and there was only one agenda item. However, I was not at that meeting. I was on vacation, but um, it was the Lyon Township carport site plan, and that was approved with some modifications. Um, the second planning commission meeting was Monday, April 22nd. I was in attendance. We held two public hearings, one for the Belmar, Belmont Park Special Land Use Review and the <coughs> Belmont Park Site Plan. Um, both were um, tabled um, due to some setback issues, lots and wetlands, and some bike path discussions and some other smaller things. Um, also on that agenda was a, a swimming pool a potential ordinance that we are going to have a public hearing on for uh, May 28th, and that would conclude my reports. Okay, great. <coughs> any questions? <coughs> Liz, any uh, there was no ZBA meeting in April, but um, we do have an item for May 20th meeting. And right. um, I'm really looking forward to it. Very exciting. It. It's very exciting. <laughs> it's a setback issue. <laughs> it's riveting. <coughs> okay, moving on. Robert, anything? Uh, so, continuing to work on. Um, looking into surrounding communities, fees and things, uh, still bouncing back and forth with trying to coordinate meeting with the uh, veterans group for the memorial. Uh, additionally, uh, Tina, just let me know we have an interest from uh, an organization to utilize some of the ball fields on the east side of the park here. And so we'll, we'll be looking at that. And I am planning on attending, uh, SEMCOG is holding a event on parks and recreation planning implementation so if anybody has anything they want asked about let me know okay great thank you thank you robert okay bob is on vacation um he's doing a great job he's going around <coughs> doing a lot of water stuff um but he deserves the time off he's been a busy man i will tell you that the flush turned out really really well we did it on uh, April 15th. We got a lot of iron out of the system, huge amounts of iron, and that was a great thing. Okay. John, I, just to follow up, I, you and I have talked about this, and I've, I've heard from many of my neighbors that they're very happy with the water. They, they could tell uh, pretty quickly that something had changed with the water for the better, so I'm happy to report that that's <coughs> what I'm hearing, too. Everybody's. We actually, <laughs> we actually did some back tea tests, I believe it was <coughs> yesterday, and they came back so clear, it was like artesian spring water coming out of the taps. Really, it wasn't yep. that clear. Yeah. So we have very, very, very good water in the township. Yes. Okay, moving on to unfinished business. <laughs> Our first one is, is Ed. Ed is in a <coughs> conference at the bottom of Ohio. We couldn't make it, but I will tell you that the water tower has been a little bit hard to get started with the bad weather we've had. Everything's very high in the air, so we have to definitely have the right weather to get this thing going. He decided instead of bringing the, the, all the galvanized pieces of the pan here and weld them together on the ground, they're going to do it in shop and bring them up in pieces. And then when the, the large crane gets assembled, which they had to do on its own pad because of the heaviness of the crane to lift this stuff up 200 feet. Um, they got that finished. So now they're just waiting on the weather to change to get these, uh, this crane in. Um, <clears throat> our water plant is working extremely well in Woodwind. 
and the South Hill plant is under construction. They've put a lot of the pipe structure in the ground. They're working on the uh, concrete tanks now. Things are moving along very, very well. The water softening part of the piece of the puzzle is starting to get some traction. We've got a couple um, options and we're working on them. That's all I can say. I don't want to make it public what they are right now. Uh, it doesn't include some other municipalities, so I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> other than that, any questions for the butters? Are we getting some kind of adjustment in the in our uh, fee for the pan since we've been so delayed? I thought there would. I thought Sean had brought that up at some point a few months ago. They re they made it twice. <clears throat> they made it twice. He turned it down, so they made it twice. I don't know how you get a fee when they made it better. He turned it down because it wasn't to his liking. So I'm not sure. Ed. Ed, or Ed, I mean? Yeah, Artesian turned it down. Okay. So I'm not sure how you can get an extra fee. They made it twice. The, the way I talked to Ed directly, the way he explained <laughs> it to me, because I had a similar question, was that it was within a certain tolerance that they had intended to deliver, but he was unhappy with it because yeah. he, he felt that it was just so borderline that he was unwilling to take it. So that was sort of the concession. This is they said, fine, we'll remake it, even though we don't think we should. So rather yeah, than a drawn-out fight, he said, just remake it, and then the weather, we had lost that season anyway. So I, um, we're really still in really good shape. <clears throat> we really are. It, it, I don't think we're going to have a problem whatsoever. I think I'll go online, and then we're going to have tons and tons of water. Cool. Any other questions? All right, and let's move on. We have two second readings of uh, two ordinances. The first one is our cross connection for the township here, and nothing has changed on that. Um, basically, we're just looking for to final this out and get this into place. Make a motion to adopt uh, ordinance 05-19. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and the second one is our wireless right away um, shared plan. Um, that again, I don't believe anything's changed from the last time, has it, Carol? No. <laughs> okay. So that is also the same. I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance 06-19. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on to the establishing the fees of the wireless facilities and the support structures. Um, this one? Has everyone had a chance to look through this? It seems like the fees are low, but I think that's what it is, right? Well, they're actually we're actually setting them higher than the state statute provides. We're being more consistent with the federal statute, so we we want to start it out that way. See okay. What the response is. John, that was my question. Is I thought they were low. Yeah, yeah. they yeah, looked a little low. Oh, <laughs> the state's way down. Huh. I'll make a motion to approve resolution on number 20 dash or 2019 dash 12 establishing fees for wireless facilities wireless support structures and utility poles in the public right-of-way second okay we have a support we have a second um any more discussion on this okay all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed all right moving on to new business all right <sighs> Here's a very cool thing, and uh, this is the this is the agreement <coughs> with Lion Wastewater that we've been working on so hard, and um, I think Mr. August is going to go ahead and explain <coughs> what this agreement says, and uh, it's it's really very cool. So, Mr. August, with that, uh, thank you, Gary August, uh, outside counsel for you guys. Um, You'll recall that there was a uh, dispute that the township had with Lyon Wastewater, and Lyon Wastewater also had a cross dispute with the township regarding the interpretation of the second amended sewage disposal facility agreement. As a result of that dispute, you guys passed resolution 2018-06, uh, which escrowed certain funds that were in dispute. And part of that resolution was you directed uh, the township supervisor and myself and the uh, township attorney 
to enter into negotiations with Lyon Wastewater to see if a resolution could be reached resolving those interpretations. Uh, after much time and many, many negotiations uh, involving both myself and the township attorney, uh, we present to you today a pro two proposed agreements that uh, uh, we're asking you to approve that would resolve those disputes and provide a path forward with a third amended sewage uh, disposal uh, agreement. And yes. And Gary, maybe we should also point out because uh, we had the other agreement because we had the dispute as to when the flip would occur that we had already taken care of. Maybe you could explain that to the public as well. Yep, absolutely. So. Uh, the first thing is that there's a settlement agreement that resolves all the disputes, and it resolves the disputes by entering into the Third Amendment. Under the Second Amendment, which was the operating agreement, there was something that we call the flip, which was when there were a certain number of REUs sold, the rate would get reduced, and that was back in the original agreement. There had been an ongoing dispute as to when that event would occur. We previously entered into an agreement that you guys approved through resolution that set forth when 122 new uh, REUs were sold that that event would occur. The third amendment that we're asking you to approve today incorporates that same uh, 122 REU standard. Uh, we believe that that should be reached in the very near future. When that is reached, then the rate would be adjusted to $6,564 as the base rate established from 2000 that would then have increases per formula. Under the second amended sewage disposal facility agreement, that formula was based on what was called the 11 bond index. Under the new third amendment that we're proposing today, that 11 bond index formula is scrapped. And instead, it's replaced by the CPI, which is a consumer price index formula that isn't related to lending of dollars, but rather the time value of money. And the CPI that was chosen was the CPI All Urban Consumers Index. And that would apply each year on a year-by-year -year comparison on October 31st was the date. It doesn't matter what date is picked because it's an overall year by year comparison. So it takes the average rate for the prior year. So it doesn't matter whether you pick December 31st or April 1st, because it, it, it's the whole average for the year. We picked October, okay? Uh, and then that would adjust for any increases from that year to year under that CPI, it would adjust for the next year. Uh, we had previously discussed about whether it would decrease if there's any decreases. We went back and historically looked, and that index has never had a decrease since the Great Depression of 2019. Uh, so as a result of that, and consistent with the language in the second amended uh, agreement, it only applies to increases. So that amount, whatever it is, there had previously been discussion of whether there would be a cap or a floor, all that was eliminated, all right? It's just whatever the increase in the CPI is on a year-for-year -year basis, that would apply to the rate, all right? Based on a historic review, that would show a much decreased multiplying effect than what we had previously experienced under the interpretation of the 11 bond index. 
So not only did these resolutions, these resolved things, result in a lower base rate, all right, but it also resulted in the determination of when the flip would occur and a much lower multiplier effect that would occur from the annual increases. So we believe that that, that is a very favorable uh, outcome for uh, the township on that. Uh, I don't know, Carol, if you want to speak further on the rate issue. Uh, there were also I, I the, other, the only comment I would make is when you were discussing the rates, uh, the public needs to understand the number that you were talking about is the amount that is payable under the contract to lie in wastewater. That's correct. There's there's two components uh, for the REU rate. There's the rate that's paid to lie in wastewater under this agreement, and the township has its own component for the operation and maintenance of the, the complaint, which is a fee that's established every year to track the township's actual costs of its operations. And those two components make up the total REU rate that the public would pay. So part of the agreement is now we are rescinding that prior resolution that called for the escrowing of those funds because now <coughs> the dispute has been resolved. So the township would pay to lie in wastewater within seven days of this agreement the escrowed funds that were being held by the township in an interest-bearing account. Lion Wastewater would get those escrowed funds along with any interest that accrued, and going forward, there would no longer be any escrow. And then the rate would be established pursuant to this new formula. Um, with respect to uh, the timing of when uh, people would pay for those REUs, that was also uh, an issue that we negotiated with Lion Wastewater, and we believe very favorably. Before, uh, it was like people would have these projects and they'd make a reservation at the hotel for these REUs and they would have to pay at that, that time before all their permits got approved and they didn't even know if the project was, was viable. Uh, that did not make us as competitive with other communities. So we now have agreed that the REUs would be paid at the earlier of the pre-construction meeting, the issuance of the first building permit, or the construction of the project, the first construction on the property. And that means that uh, developers or people would understand that they've gotten everything that they need to be able to begin to work. So we believe that that was a very favorable resolution uh, as well. Uh, also, uh, there was a dispute as to the amount of the credit that the township uh, would get against future expansions on the project by line wastewater under the agreement, Lion Wastewater has a right of first refusal to do future expansions on the system. If we don't use them for those expansions, we have to pay them an 8.5% fee. We had certain credits against that fee that were in dispute. We agreed as to the amount of those credits and also agreed that an additional $111,000 would be added to those credits. Uh, so it was good to resolve all those issues. In addition, we agreed that the township and mine wastewater would uh, meet annually so that we could have a meeting set up instead of using township resources to have multiple meetings with Lion Wastewater. And we agreed what records would be provided to Lion Wastewater at that meeting. So it provided a much more streamlined process for working with Lion Wastewater. Uh, in addition, uh, we reached agreement with Lion Wastewater that the parties would be bound by what the MDEQ, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, or its successor entity would determine with respect to the gallons per day capacity of the beds. 
this was an important issue because there was potential disputes between whether that capacity would be measured by permitted capacity or actual flow, and the parties agreed to be bound by the MDEQ determination. Uh, if uh, Lyon Township wanted to dispute that MDEQ capacity determination, it was agreed that they could do so, but they had to pay the cost of, of doing that, uh, including you know, any attorney fees or anything like that. It's, it's generally the township's interest and Lyon Wastewater's interest are aligned in that. We, we want the most maximum capacity that we can get for those beds so that we don't have to build new facilities when that capacity is reached. But uh, we were able to negotiate that if there was going to be a challenge to that capacity, that would it be on Lyon Wastewater's dime instead of the township's dime. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that's on Lyon Wastewater and not the township. Right. Uh, so, so those are the main provisions uh, of the uh, agreement. Um, <clears throat> I think I've hit everything. Uh, and uh, it was a, a labor of love to represent you guys in doing this, uh, but I think we've, we've obtained something that even though these weren't uh, township dollars that were being paid for the REUs, the township took a, a very strong interest in making sure that the people that were coming and doing business with the township and the citizens that were paying for these REUs uh, got the best possible cost, and we were able really to substantially lower that uh, and also create a formula in the future that will best serve the township for a long time. So uh, I would encourage on uh, my legal advice that I believe that this is an agreement that I would recommend that the two agreements, the settlement agreement and the third amendment, that the township enter into. And I would also just note that Line Wastewater has already signed the documents, so they have approved the agreements. Yes, that's right. So that uh, uh, Ms. Rosati uh, pretty much demanded that they do so, so that there wouldn't be any changes. And with your resolution, the, the township supervisor and the clerk could sign off of it uh, tonight at the end of the meeting, and we'd be good to go, and all issues would be resolved. Yeah, I, any I, questions? Think was, I think this was really a win-win for the township. And, and the biggest part of the win was the ambiguity in the last agreement on this flip. That was a lawsuit waiting to happen every second of every day. And we've eliminated that. That is a plus. That is a plus. And on top of that, we've got a, now we've got a rate that we actually are competitive in our sewer rates. I think that this will probably spur a little bit of business growth downtown that we've been begging for. So this is all good stuff. And any questions, I'd like to open the floor to Mr. August or Carol. And, and I would just like to add uh, before that, this also includes a release of all past claims. So not only does it resolve the flip thing, but it gives the, the, the township a sense of security that there's no other open issues that that line wastewater or anything can complain about, we're starting with a, a clean slate. And, and it's really important because Lion Wastewater is our partners. They really are our partners, and now we can actually look at them as partners, whereas we couldn't before. It was so one-sided and so hard to deal with, and now we have an agreement that's really, we're partners now. And we can work this thing together. I think it's a great thing. So any questions for Mr. August, please, if not, uh, we could open up to go ahead and get this passed. Uh, John, I just wanted to say it, it's awesome that we were, the board's able to do this. I mean, we've hit Incredible. the water system, now we've hit the sewer agreement. I mean, we're getting things done and rolling through the infrastructure. You know, I can't say enough that uh, this agreement that they had was ironclad. They did not have to change this. We, this was, they had an agreement. They, they worked very hard to come up with a uh, an agreement. I think it's. It, is it 100% good for the township? It's not. It might be slightly tilted, but you know what? It's 10 times better than it ever was. 
So that's probably, the greatest part. Probably more than that. <laughs> I, I believe it's more than that. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate we, we couldn't start from scratch, but yes. considering where we were, it's significant improvement. And yeah. at least we have some understanding between the parties of what it is moving forward. Yes. And it really helps the users of the system first oh. and foremost. So it's right. just good government that the township would get involved in this way when it was helping the users more than the township dollars. And it really was. It, w it was just a good thing for the township. Thanks so thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Original thank you. And again, it was a, a pleasure to work with all of you. Thank you. Yes, thank if, you. If two seconds. I, Go for it's, it. it's amazing Please. that our legal, our legal attorney, Carol, um, when we presented this problem to her, she recommended Gary mm -hmm. at the most highest um, esteem. And uh, we, the three full-time elected officials, got to work very closely with Carol and Gary and Matt, which is with, with uh, Gary's office. And, and it really is amazing, the negotiations that they did on behalf of the township that we thought could never happen. And um, I just want to say that our legal team, Carol, Gary, and Matt, are amazing. Really we are, amazing. And we are fortunate to have them, and we're fortunate that Carol guided us to Gary. And I just want the board to know that even though you've experienced it, we got to experience it often. And uh, you are amazing. We appreciate everything you did for us. Thank you. I guess we need uh, someone to motion, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't forget number three, too, in this. So So we have to I'd adopt take, three? I'd take them one at a time, yeah. Okay. Does anyone want to carve the first one? So make a motion to approve resolution 2019-13 to include authorizing the township supervisor and township clerk to execute a settlement agreement with Lion Wastewater, LLC. I'll support that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, number one. Consideration of resolution number 2019 would be the same resolution, would it not, Carol? Apparently Just different it's parts. all in one. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 2019-13 uh, to authorize the supervisor and township clerk to execute a third amendment to the second amended sewage disposal facility agreement. I'll support that. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, so now we got to get the escrow. And, and that would include, uh, th that, that yeah, motion that would include it. authorizing the treasurer, township treasurer to release to Lion Wastewater LLC all funds and interest currently being held by the township pursuant to the September 1st, 2018 escrow agreement between the township and Lion Wastewater LLC. Does that need to be a motion or is and, that just and included? terminating the future escrowing. Okay. Uh, terminating the terminating the future escrowing of funds under Township Resolution 2018-06, and I would make that in the form of a motion. I'll support that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Gary, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful. Okay, moving on to the consideration of an extension of approval for 12 months for the Woodwind Planned Wood Ridge Plan development, a single family development consisting of 102 proposed homes on 85.03 acres south of Nine Mile, west side of Napier Road. If I can make a little yes. statement before we start on this, there, the next two items deal with uh, extensions requested by two PDs that were previously approved. There appears to have been some confusion on the part of some members of the public that both PDs have expired because construction didn't begin within 24 months. However, under the zoning ordinance, that's section 704 I2, a developer can request an extension of this 24 month period by submitting an application prior to the date that the PD would expire. And both Windridge and Devonshire timely submitted their written request to extend. And under section 7.04 for N capital I to B, a request for extension is first reviewed by the Planning Commission, which makes a recommendation to the Township Board. The Township Board then has the ultimate authority whether to grant the extension for an additional 12 months. As to any other recommendation made by the Planning Commission, the Board can ultimately decide to agree with the Planning Commission, accept conditions that they've imposed, set your own conditions, or reject any conditions. And both Devonshire and Windridge received favorable recommendations from the PC. 
Uh, it's, I will note that Devonshire did have some PC recommended uh, conditions of obtaining certain easements by March 1, 2019. And again, that's ultimately the decision for the board to make as to whether or not extending this project would have any conditions regarding easements. Um, part of the problem is there's sort of a gap in time from when the Planning Commission acted before it came to the Township Board and that was just, it just sort of fell through the cracks. However, as I said, the applications were timely filed, they're still pending, so neither of those PDs has been expired pursuant to the ordinance. And I guess the last comment I would make is the only thing that's here before us tonight is whether or not to grant the extension. We're not, you know, talking about whether or not either of these PDs should have been approved in the first place. Okay. And I believe that <clears throat> by the letters that I've read, it looks like McKenna, uh, Brian, you have no, you have no issues with extending the. Correct. We don't believe that conditions have changed um, that would negatively impact the projects, um, both of them. So we would recommend approval if you're comfortable with, with the facts presented. Okay. And I also read um, engineer's notes, and you don't seem to have any no, um, situation. No, our letter is in the packet. It's the same letter for both agenda items. These two developments participated with... Um, Two other projects, Shadowwood, as well as a vacant parcel owned by the Sobeys on Eight Mile, and they're funding the off-site improvements as part of their PD agreements, including the sump drain, as well as all of the easements. One of them is on your agenda tonight, and the other, the, a second one was um, put on the agenda from the consent agenda. And so I just documented since they were approved, there's just been a considerable amount of work that was done that the boards pro probably was not aware of. The sump drain, just searching my calendar, there were 33 meetings held just on the sump drain alone. Plus, I myself tried, well, I tried to negotiate 25 of the easements, 24 of them successful. Um, so I just wanted to give you that background. I mean, it, this is definitely a project where there's been a lot of work in the background, and therefore, I support the extensions. Okay. I'm not really sure this board has ever turned down an extension, I mean, when they asked for it. But anyway, that being said, I'd like to open up questions. Anybody have any questions? And remember, this is not about the site plan. This is about the extension. <clears throat> okay, would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, I, I'll, I have some, I guess, general questions about this, and I apologize because there's a lot of questions. This, this kind of boils into the packet not being up until Friday, and unfortunately I was out of town with family. So wasn't able to look but at this. But do remember, Chris, this is only an extension. Absolutely. There's not but a lot of other things I involved. I will not talk about the site plan, um, but I am just curious. Like, there was no request for the extension within the packet. Um, I assume that was requested just to the Planning Commission and not to the Board? Or I guess there's procedural issues that I'm very concerned about because there was a seven-month delay between when this came to the Planning Commission and when this come is coming to the board and every other PD has always been the next meeting so I guess what went wrong and are we now vulnerable I don't see where we're vulnerable I mean I can't explain what went wrong it somehow just sort of fell through the cracks I don't know, think anybody knows exactly why but the application is still technically pending, so they can come before us for the decision. So, um, Leslie, you mentioned that you had spent hours negotiating the easement, so there has been progress. Um, is that is are we paying for those negotiations, or is the developer paying for those negotiations? The developer group has escrow funds that they post at the township that once the easements are signed, the residents get paid for them too. And to date, there's probably been about $170,000 spent on easements and negotiations at no cost to your residents. Okay. And I guess um, I am concerned with the statement that things have, haven't changed since the original approval. Um, you know, just that area itself, there's a signal at Eight Mile and Napier. Um, Napier Road's been paved. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just don't agree with that. Things have not changed. Um, that's for the good. That's good stuff that's changed. It is. Yeah. You ready for a motion? 
Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I'll move to approve AP-15-24 Windbridge Plan Development request to extend construction schedule and phasing plan letter of request dated September 12, 2018 for a 12-month period. I'll second that. I have a question if I can ask. Sure, before. you absolutely can. Um, if they're granted an extension from one year, is that one year from today? Or is that one year in beyond their... I, I would say it would be one year from today. Okay. And then what happens, um, do, can they request a second? Brian, can they request a second extension? Yeah, the ordinance says uh, may seek subsequent 12-month extensions. Um, so again, those would be initiated through a request to the Planning Commission for those extensions. And is that is there a limit on the number of extensions? There is not. It just reads subsequent 12-month extensions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, we have a motion in support. I'd like to call this in by roll. Sean O'Neill? No. Lisa Blaine? No. Does that No. Don Hicks? Yes. Don Dolan? Yes. Patricia yes. Yes. All right, moving on to the next one, the extension and approval up to 12 months for Devonshire Plan Development, single family development consisting of 84 proposed homes on 71.44 acres. North side of 8 Mile, west of Napier. Again, this is an extension, exactly like the last one. I would just like to clarify, John, that the same would apply to this item, that one-year extension would be from today? Yes. Thank you. I'd move to approve the AP 18-59, an extension for the Devonshire Plan Development for <coughs> one year, 12 months, beginning today. Okay, we have support. Support. All right, any further discussion? No, I just echo the same comments as the previous item. Okay, so noted. Um, please call this by roll also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sean No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. All right, moving on. Okay, moving on to the approval of a resolution number 2019-14 uh, concerning the acquisition of property and approving the declaration <laughs> necessa 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 <laughs> of a taking uh, of an easement in the market value. And this I'm going to let Leslie talk about this one a little bit. Um, Leslie, will you kind of put out there and let everyone know sure. what you've done here? So, well, this is somewhat related to the off-site improvements that we were discussing in the last two agenda items. Um, out of the 25 easements that I negotiated, I have not been successful in negotiating an easement um, for parcel 21-36-400-045. Uh, between him and his attorney over the past two years, I've had at least 26 well, I have contacted them at least 26 times um, in good faith trying to negotiate with the property owner. We have not been able to come to an agreement. Um, therefore, working with Carol's office, they have prepared the documents that would start the condemnation proceedings, and I'm sure Carol could explain those better than I can. Um, it's just I don't think uh, we will be able to come to a conclusion. We're just really far apart on numbers and I don't think uh, what the property owners are asking for would appraise for and therefore it's in your packet for consideration tonight. <clears throat> yeah, we have really, really tried hard. We've offered a lot of things up to uh, this gentleman and he keeps moving the goalposts on us. Uh, he, he makes a comment that he would take some things and then we offer them up and then moves. So that's why it's here. The 24 the 25 have been approved and they're happy with everything that's going on and this is the last thing that anybody ever wants to do but I, I don't see any way out. It's definitely not recommended lightly. Um, I it is not. 
inform the property owner and his attorney that it would most likely be on the May board agenda. Um, I've been pretty full disclosure with everything with the property owner. It's just sometimes this happens, and um, I think I've made it a good effort in trying to negotiate with them, even looking back through the numbers. This is probably even light. There's probably even more times I've called or texted that I, I forgot to people. write down. This is just on my tracking system. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about this, and Carol um, can answer any of the condemnation questions. Anybody have any questions about this? Well, I, I have uh, quite a few. Um, and first of all, I wanted to tell or say thank you to Tina. Um, this weekend, I sent an email saying I can't get to the packets. Um, some of the information has has not been loaded into the packets, not on our end. But um, so I tried to do some of this without asking a lot of questions tonight. But there just wasn't information. Um, that I could access. And I guess my question would be, um, why can't they, why can't we fit this in the right, road right away? Well, the parcel is on eight mile and there is an existing 60 foot right of way um, that dates back to, I think, 1926. Um, a lot of the old borders in, when they're county borders, they actually acquired the easement that long ago for the right of way. But since um, your utilities have to be on the township side, not Salem. Both the water and the sewer have to be on the north side of 8 Mile, uh, which makes the easement that much wider. Plus, there's existing gas mains and BTE power poles, and that's really why it's pushed so far north um, along 8 Mile. There's just not enough room to physically fit it. Okay. And then, I mean, I, why can't they just go around him? Well, that's not always that easy to do. Um, you, you would then not be following main roads, which is somewhat unusual when you're negotiating with private property owners. Like if we went just around this parcel, then his neighbor to the north who actually signed the easement because their parcel kind of wraps around this one, so they have a little bit of frontage on 8 Mile, I would almost then be going in their backyard. Not I, but the sewer. <laughs> Um, and that's very unusual when you're placing um, and designing water, water main and sanitary sewers. Typically they're long main roads. Sometimes they do traverse in other places if you have available land, but if you're going seeking an easement from a property owner, typically it, it's, most people wouldn't want it going through their backyard. Um. Okay, I think that's all I have right now. And I'll tell you, this is a totally invisible easement. This goes underground, and they did this to my property when I was on Grand River. They came, and they only gave me a dollar for mine, actually. <laughs> One dollar, and they took 25 feet further south off Grand River to put the sewer in. And you would never know it's there. You can still use the property. They're getting paid for it. This is actually, he's being paid quite well for it. Yeah, it will, I mean, it, during construction, it's like any construction, it will definitely be inconvenient. It's in his front yard, but once it's They'll restore restored, it to exactly like it was. Yeah. I guess the other thing I'd point out, and this was before my time, but there was a memorandum of understanding that was executed between the parties that really mandates the township to obtain these easements. So if you can't obtain it voluntarily, you're really required by that agreement to condemn to get them. Am I correct on that, Leslie? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? I just want to mention that through this process, this applicant, like any other, would go, there's a legal process that has to be followed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are protections in place. This is all, this, this happens uh, in communities that are extending utilities um, all, all over the state, all over the country, probably. Um, I don't know how it works in other states, but um, so that this person does seem to have uh, a process still to uh, to protect him through uh, this process. Uh, I don't know if that made sense, but he still will go through a legal process uh, through the circuit court. And you know, any motion to approve this, I would ask that it include um, a 
I, I guess, a clause or caveat that would allow us to continue to negotiate uh, with Mr. McLaren as long as we can to try to resolve this amicably. So it's, it doesn't seem uh, confrontational. I agree with we that. Can. Yeah, the first step will be the township will make uh, another written good faith offer. So right. there's still that little bit of time that discussions can take place. And you can always discuss it as soon as the condemnation action is filed as well. There's nothing that prohibits that. Okay. Um, I have a couple, well, I guess it would have been helpful to have that memo of understanding if that was something that the township had entered into. Um, again, not in the packet. Um, the Since I can kind of see how this is going, um, I will point out a couple of things that I noticed in the declaration of taking that I have questions about. Number, item three has um, persons other than the owners having a potential interest in the property. There's, you know, utility companies, but there's some private, <coughs> I don't know who they are, but there's about 12 different people yep. also listed. Yep, I can explain that. Um, the this gentleman owns Hunter's Ridge which is a private drive and so because the people who live off of Hunter's Ridge have an interest in crossing this property my understanding the way that Beth explains it to me is they also have to be notified because there's an easement that they that accesses their homes from his property so it'll go across their access easement. right and that's why they were um, they were also served notice, I believe, on the good faith offer as well. Okay. And then item four, it references a permanent pathway easement as part of the valuation mm. as opposed to sanitary sewer easement. Oh, no, that should be crossed off the permanent pathway. That's a, or, or no, it should be renamed permanent sewer easement. I mean, again, you make those corrections on this. Um, you know, I, I just don't feel comfortable using taxpayer dollars to go after a, a resident's property like this for the benefit of the developer. So, but make the corrections, you guys. Well, and I guess as, as under, the, under the memorandum of understanding, we don't pay for that. The developer pays for all of it. Yeah, so I was just going to ask that question. Help. So this will not it's be taxpayer, no taxpayer dollar dollars. funded at all. Yeah, because yeah, that would be concern as well. Okay, any other questions? If not, a motion would be in order to go ahead forward or not. I'll make a motion to approve um, a resolution number 2019-14 concerning the acquisition of property and approving declaration of a necessity in taking and to a declaration of taking an easement with fair market value in the amount of three thousand five fifty six fifty nine for the permanent sanitary sewer easement over parcel twenty one thirty six four hundred oh forty five for the construction of sanitary sewer in section thirty six of the township. While we continue to negotiate um, with the um, property owner as this moves forward, and um, I had one more thing I wanted. Agreement from four years ago, and that the our obligation yeah, that Carol mentioned of the, uh, with the mention of the obligation that the townships under um, I don't know what was it called. Uh, it's called a memorandum of understanding. With the mem memorandum of understanding. Okay. Do we have a second? I have a second. Oh, can I add one there? Yes. With, without using any township dollars for this. That's what I want to add. Okay. Still, Still support. All right, we have a motion and a support. I'd like to call this one by roll also. Can you amend to correct the number four so it says sewer instead of pathway? Oh, yes, yeah. I can add that to my motion. Still good? Mm-hmm. Okay, we have an amendment. Could you call this by roll, please, Kelly? Patricia Carcola? Yes. John Dolan? Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. All right. Motion passes. Yes. Consideration of Spicer proposal for Novi Lion Drain cleanout. Okay. 
So included in the packet was um, really the same letter that was in the special board meeting packet that was held in March. Um, at that meeting, we discussed uh, the issues with the no by lion drain as well as some other drains in the township and the Spi spicer group is an engineering company that has a blanket contract with oakland county water resources commission um, i want to say probably about a year ago i spoke to the county on your behalf and just mentioned the complaints that we were getting from property owners that are within the no by lion drainage district so they obtained a proposal from Spicer Group, um, which is $25,000, and Oakland County has stated that the district would pr pay for that study, um, but they would like assurances from the Township Board that you would support a project by resolution if the study identifies any necessary improvements. And this was discussed for quite a while in March <coughs> at the special meeting, and it's um, again before you for your consideration if you want to move forward at this time it w or at that time it was really I don't know if it was a tabled or postponed formally but the consensus was bring this back give you some time to think about it and what this really means because there was some hesitancy I mean essentially if you approve this and it identifies a project is necessary then you're you know you'll be <coughs> obligated to pass a resolution to initiate a project and we don't know what those costs are until a study is done this one has no, this one has nothing to do with the, the drain study for the park right no this it is doesn't. totally separated this okay. is the entire no by lion drain would be studied that goes through lion township and part of no by um, the drain the district is quite large uh, it should be noted, though, if a project is identified, the township would be responsible for about 10% of that cost. There is a city, village, township portion in the district. Novi is about 10% as well. Um, so there, before the board meeting, I verified with the county that, yes, they would expect a resolution to be passed if, you know, if a project was identified or, I guess, some, a deficiency in the drain. Um, but this would not include going back to FEMA and remapping anything. If that's something that needed to be looked at, I'm sure it could be built into the project cost at the time. This is really just to model the drain. It's a HECRAS model, and it would identify if culverts are undersized, kind of big items that could be causing some of this backwater flooding that we see in the especially at the 11 mile in Milford area there's been residents that have complained Walnut Creek Country Club has complained and put these complaints in um, writing so that kind of gives you it really goes all the way across the township this drainage district all right any questions for Leslie I'd like to have a dialogue here um, just just to verify that this study then is costing the township zero dollars this is going the drain commissioner's office is paying would pay for the study they just want us to pass a resolution to say hey if we pay for the study you guys will you know at least do something with the study do a project or something the district pays for it yes so the, the drainage district, would district mm -hmm. that would also pay for the project would pay for this but what if you understand it's going to get spread against our residents yes correct it's the district so mm -hmm. It's the Sources entire district, no including the no-buy parcels. Right. Mm -hmm. Understood. I just want people so, to yep. understand that. So this drain is, as we've discussed, as you've mentioned, is in partly in Novi. Are they having to do something similar? Or we have the ability to do this, and then Novi is just along with us and is sharing in the cost of this, their residents, their yep. city? Similarly, they could do the same thing. They and, could and initiate And I believe they have. Have they not previously? No. I don't know. No? Oh, mm -hmm. I thought. No. Oh, well, somebody else did. Another adjacent <laughs> no. community did, didn't they? It, well, we've hit, got hit by the city of South Lyon twice mm -hmm. okay. for two separate things. One was a legal action that the residents brought upon the um, county drain commission mm -hmm. which then had to be spread back over that and, right. and another uh, a big emergency kind of repairs hole. yeah big emergency mm -hmm. if it's an so. emergency like a road caves in because a culvert fails the drain commissioner can establish a project by emergency and you have no say it the costs are what the costs are to fix right. it this is not an emergency so it requires a resolution by one of the municipalities to really initiate any project so are we able to so we have the twenty five thousand dollars 
if we needed to to pay for this study. It's nice that they're offering to mm -hmm. do it in the district, but that's going to be a drop in the bucket compared to what we all, I believe, feel that the cleanup's going to be. It could be <laughs> easily a seven-figure, I would anticipate could it's be. going to be a seven-figure mm -hmm. cleanup without knowing how badly mm -hmm. they're going to put us and the residents on the hook. I would rather them not pay for it if, if that... I mean, if them paying for it hooks us into just being along for the ride then, because then we lose, for $25,000, We again, we know it's a problem, right. but I'd prefer to to um, not roll the dice, pay the 25000 maybe if, if it's a $300,000 problem and we think that that's reasonable, maybe we can get reimbursed. I don't know what other options are. This seems to be pretty, like, draconian, and it seems to me to be inflexible, and I want to fix it, but I don't want to obligate us to a multi-million dollar drain clean out that the rest of the world has ignored for the last hundred and some odd years, in particular the drain commissioner who's responsible for keeping these things up. But the drain commissioner cannot initiate a project over their statutory mm -hmm. limitations, which is $4,500 per year per mile. Unless we change the chapter of the drain. Right. Right. Which, which is, I mean, ultimately may be what we end up doing anyway. The, and then if it was a chapter 20 drain, the, the county could just initiate the own, their own project and assess the district. Um, when I asked Glenna Powell of the Water Resources Commission that very question, well, what if we, the township, contracted with Spicer and just had this work done? And he said, well, in his opinion, the township would then still be at the same risk as the drain commissioner because it's public. And if there's a problem and you ignore it, then I... So, I, I, this seems ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what's we know answer. there's a problem and there has right. been a problem for like 80 years. <laughs> yeah. We're just having to deal with it now. And today, the people here today are going to have to deal with this yeah. problem. So, we keep ignoring or, or trying to dance around this elephant in the room. And it's, it's ridiculous. I, I don't, you know, everything doesn't fit into a... I mean, it must be nice to operate in black and white all the time down there. But that's not how it goes. And I'm more than a little frustrated that again this is just one of a couple that are just dumped at our feet so this is this is a seven figure problem and there's another one you know just down the road it's at least six figures i mean it culvert replacements if the road's paved is 500 grand to 750 grand if it's not paved you probably could get away with less than that but that's mm -hmm. one culvert it's always seven it's always seven figures does it obligate us to uh, to fix absolutely everything that they find deficient I, that's what I'd be. They don't know. They no. just, we have to do a project. What does that mean? So we could do a twenty-five thousand dollar project. They, we could they do would a work identify. Beat. What they would do is identify the deficiencies that don't allow a ten-year rain event, that don't allow the drain to handle a ten-year rain event. But my question and there's is, still no idea what we have no idea yeah. what that. The, the question is, the does. does that say like, okay, we we create somewhat like our capital improvement plan? We we rate these different projects and we just kind of start ticking them off a list or does that mean no. that they're going to come in and say you have to do all of this well it's all of these corrections the study the well, the no, difference no, is no, 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 if if you were doing a study like if you wanted to submit a study to FEMA for example the study would be the reason why it's that much more expensive is you have to show provide so many cross sections every x feet so you have to survey every X feet along the drain and say this is what it looks like. You have a lot more inputs into your model. This is, even though it's detailed, it's a little more general to kind of hit the highlights, like where are the big deficiencies in the drain that are really the big problems. Typically, they're culverts. Yeah. And my hunch, just by looking at the maps, say Spalding Road, number one, hits a problem because if you look upstream of Spalding Road, it's a massive floodplain and downstream isn't. So that's just common sense engineering. That's a problem. Um, but how much more? The, well, the expectation of project would be what they find, if they, where they find the deficiencies, they would expect it to be replaced. If you wanted to do it on your own and hire yeah. Spicer to contract directly with you and you have that report and you use it as part of a capital improvement project, I think that can be done. I just, I'm reiterating to you what the uh, Water Resource Commission told me when I asked that question also. But I mean, then, I mean, can we tell them that we plan on possibly, a, we could have a 20 phase plan. It could take us 20 years to fix all these, I mean, literally. I mean, we well, don't, there, well, it's what's been the, sitting for 100 years. So yeah, so they be should be thrilled because that's, that's like lightning speed for, um, I don't know if you really want to 
rip the Band-Aid off 20 times because initiating a pro anytime you initiate a project, you have there's public hearings, all of the people in the district are notified. That seems more painful <laughs> to me in a way. I, but I don't know. If, if this is a, a $3 million fix and you're going to tell these people they get a $3 million bill to fix a drain that was a problem before their grandparents were born, and it is what it is today, and they're not having flooding. I mean, most people aren't going to see the value in it. They're going to be furious, and they're going to wonder why we walk them into this lion's den. Well, I don't know. I've seen true. the whole 11 and Milford floods all the time. It's, but I who does it flood? A lot of it parcels. It floods a lot of people on 11 Mile. A ton. Is, are people in Milford Road. Are their yeah, houses flooding? No, they're yards. They, the yards like are the underwater. south of 11 Mile on the east side of Milford Road, the, I don't want to say their names, but there's a family there who's yeah. been in here. I mean... I don't know. It seems like that's probably one of our top complaints is people with, you know, getting flooded. Well, like and I'd rather know what, what we have to do. Sure. I mean, maybe it comes back and there is just, you know, if you do one or two items, then you can mitigate 75% of the issues, and that's what we do. I don't know. I, and that's it's, just, you're we don't know yet. the dice, though. And I feel like we, they take control and they have tons of authority to force us to do things that we may not either want to do in a time frame that they want us to do them or our residents uh, may not be able to afford to do. Carol, is there a cap on how much, like, that we can assess residents? No, I don't really know that. Well, I mean, I'd like to know so that we're not putting, if, the, if this would lead to us being responsible for a massive project that is so extensive that we would have to assess a ridiculous amount of money to each resident, then I'm uncomfortable with that. Well, at that point, you'd have to assess it over a term of years. I mean, there's just no right. way you could say to somebody, okay, your bill this year is $50,000. Right. right. So I, I guess their 10 year assessment. Which is, which, which is, I think, what Sean's expressing is the uncertainty of, you know, what the Drain Commission would, ex not Drain Commission anymore, but what they would expect us to do as a result of this study. And so I guess it's kind of, I mean, it's, you know it's an issue you have to deal with, and maybe the question is, do you pay for it yourself so you control what you do in terms of projects going forward to control the costs to the residents? No, if, the, if we pay for that, does that, is that paid for by just those in the district for Lion Drain, or is that, is that for the entire township would pay for that study? Well, that's a, that's the question you'd have to decide whether okay. you just do it as take the township's money to do it because it's a problem, you know, that the township Which feels must be dealt with. Not, I don't not looking to, to assess this, it against that district. I don't happen to live in this district, but I certainly do know I have you know friends and and I know their businesses and uh, um, people who are affected by it. So I know it's like. It's a township-wide problem, huge, even if you're not in that district. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I'm just playing with Leslie's estimated <coughs> spreadsheet here. A million-dollar project, on average, is going to cost residents $130. Oh, that's how large the district is. Right. Oh, it's that large. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. It's the biggest drain district for in in the, of all the township drains. It's the largest district. Yeah. And on the other side, the township, we are the biggest one in the district. That would be 110,000. Yeah, that the township would pay. Mm -hmm. And then the road commission pays a portion to? 98000 So, or that city of Novi. Mm -hmm. um, road commission 78000 Because but. there are just so many parcels. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's, I, I, can, I don't remember how many parcels are in there, but there's probably thousands. Leslie, did they say that we would have to fix everything or that we would just ha have to initiate a, a project. project, not all projects? I think you would in be the initiating the project initi to fix it so that it can handle a 10-year event. So it could be one, one it could be ten. I would recommend one project. <laughs> if, unless it was something, like if you were considering to hire Spicer directly for you to get the report, if that's something you were considering. If could you're going to go through the process of create of establishing of passing a resolution for a project, it probably makes sense to also turn this Chapter Four drain into a Chapter Twenty, so ongoing maintenance can be done, so you don't wait another hundred years <laughs> for more maintenance. It just makes sense to do it all at once because it is a really it's a 
a long process and um, there are definitely going to be property owners who object who don't understand why and all of that has to be explained so it's it's not going to be easy for them either um, I, I would recommend if you're going to do it do it once well couldn't Could, you phase I mean you could have a project but it's constructed it's over a number of years couldn't you do that maybe is it it all depends on what it is. Yeah, yeah. it right. depends on. So yeah, yeah I guess and we don't just know until we have the question. report. Can we make a can motion and then be able to that it's contingent on that that we can phase it and that it's not the entire project? Then you bring that back to the and see how they it, react. To this? Or because I, mean, I just need them to say that we're not going to have to pay for everything. Like here's you know seventeen million dollar project. Do it now. I don't think. I, I would be well. They couldn't because that, they couldn't pass that along to your residents, our residents. Because it would be like a taking. You mm -hmm. can't oppose it yeah, on a piece of property that's more than, than the what value the property, the property the value is worth. Like I right. can't so even it, see how I you mean, can it get would to have to be million. within I reason and you just <laughs> they'd all end up in the tax can, tribunal. Can we, right? can yeah, we, they'd all be in the tax tribunal. So can we table this so you can go back? I mean, this isn't an emergency. It's been 100 years. So can <laughs> can you ask them some of these questions so we can have about, I mean, basically, can we phase? I mean, what's the expectation? Uh, you, you're telling me that it's a 10-year, to handle a 10-year storm, but let's say that is a million dollars. You know, can we phase it? What is, uh, you know. For a million what, dollars, what? I wouldn't recommend phasing it. But I mean, I, and I guess. I wouldn't. Well, sure. I mean, and I guess if it's the average. $17 million is a different story, but I don't think yeah. But I think he's getting that. We don't know what it's going to be. Exactly. So. I, I, feel, I feel really uncomfortable committing anyone to this. And to, I mean, it's just sort of like reaching your hand in and to it a is. jar and pulling out a yeah. number. And I, I mean, can, can we ask them what, I mean, if we do anything, it's going to be better than what is out there now. So what is their definition of a project? We have to initiate a project. Well, can that be a $100,000 project? Does it have to be a half a million dollar project? Does it have to, I know we've talked about the 10 year event. Do we have to fix all of that? Could that be phased over a period of time? I mean, okay. can we, I, I, or, this, or this is just my feeling. Put a cap on the amount that we would have to. That you would be willing to, to create a project for. Yes. The other thing too is in the past, the Water Resources Commission has been, um, like if the township wants to run the project. Typically, they'll allow you to do that if you want to, um, rather than handing it all over to the Water Resources Commission, and maybe that would give the opportunity for phasing. But um, I'll talk to them about it and maybe even see if they would be able to attend the June board meeting because I, I just keep asking them a lot of questions. <laughs> but I just really, they know the drain code. I mean, they handle this for all of the communities in Oakland County. so. Okay. Maybe I can see if they'll, they can come to the June meeting. Because I would have further questions about them managing a project and what the costs are and how, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know. Yep. As well. Where does the Novi Lion drain end? I, I'm just, my reason is. Up, I guess. Fix it. We, have yeah, we clean it all out. They're going to have a lot of water downstream somewhere. Mm -hmm. yep. Who's responsible for that? The, what They're happens is the, say, hey, you gotta do the, drain, the drain commissioner notify the other county drain commissioners when a project like this is being considered so that they can have a head start to see what kind of impact they will have. So th that's what I've been told. Well, I like the yeah. idea of tabling it and that's bringing it back next month. Next if you month? can get them to come back. Is okay, let me see if I can that? get them yes. to come. Yes. I'll make a motion to table <coughs> the Novi Fly and Drain and associated floodplain to uh, the June meeting and with the hopes that the Drain Commission can attend. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving on. The next two are permits that are annuals uh, for the fireworks displays. I'll make a motion to <coughs> approve or request, I'll make a motion for the request to grant permit for the fireworks display to the Michigan Fireworks at Cattails Golf Course. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on this one? Uh, just that um, the insurance requirements on there that yeah. will be provided before it's approved that the insurance mm -hmm. information will be filled in on the permit. They do, don't they, Tina? Yeah, they do. I don't do these ones. Yeah, oh. they already yeah, already have it. Have it. Okay. Yeah. They were a little slow in bringing. They brought their application in first and then brought that. A so lot of these organizations are new, like in March, April. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's so. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, just making sure they have yep. the insurance. Have it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I'll make a motion for the request to grant permit for fireworks display to Walnut Creek Country Club. Support. And same comment about the insurance, assuming it's in. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Good on. New flooring at Fire Station 2. Okay, so basically. This is similar to our project last year that was approved at Station 1. It's a smaller project, but uh, it's original carpeting, and uh, it's, just, it's just time. We can't vacuum anymore, and so we were looking to uh, replace with the, the LVT once again and uh, carpeting of the two dorm rooms. And the uh, same uh, company, the Sealy Group, is who we would like to bring in again. Uh, they're part of the My Deal, uh, so they get they are the flooring contractor <coughs> for the uh, state of Michigan um, and My Deal participants. And uh, we did put two other um, requests out there, but we did not get anything in return. So the, the uh, request is for $9,468 or up to $10,000 to uh, complete the project. Make a motion to approve the uh, Sealy Group LTD to complete <coughs> uh, <coughs> flooring upgrades in Station 2, uh, not to exceed $10,000, and this would come from repairs and maintenance line item 930.000. I'll second that. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <coughs> All right, the next one is the consideration of the introduction of an ordinance for dangerous buildings. Um, we, we have some problems with these dangerous buildings around the township that we don't really have an ordinance in place to renters and, and people go into these buildings and we get in there and look at them and we don't have any way to make sure they're safe. And Carol's put together this ordinance that's a really well written one that uh, I can't find any problems in it. There, we do have an existing ordinance, but it is set up significantly different from the procedures I've typically seen and the ones that are set forth of, under the State Construction Code. And having done a lot of these hearings in the past, I find that the procedure that I'm proposing to you were, is very, very effective. And so that's why I'm presenting it. It covers a lot of ground Yeah, here and, and, it, like and it. it really keeps the thing away from the township <clears throat> board until the bitter end unlike your existing ordinance. You yeah. don't want to be involved in this, um, you know, until the end if somebody wants to appeal to you. Yeah. I, has everyone had a chance to read through this? Is there any questions about uh, I, anything in here? I um, was not able to, uh, this would not load for me either. Uh -huh. I, I got about like six pages in yeah. and, uh, or I don't know how many it was. Um, so I guess I, I couldn't get to the end where it, um, was talking about really what would happen if a building were to be uh, found in this condition. So oh, you didn't get to the nuts it, and bolts. Yeah, the yeah. The enforcement part is what um, I couldn't. I couldn't get yeah, to. Basically, the way the procedure would work is we would send out a notice to somebody that we consider the building to be dangerous for one of the reasons set forth in this ordinance, which mirrors the state statute. Okay, and the building official would do an affidavit or have some kind of report attached to that. Then we would set it for a hearing before a hearing officer. And as this moves forward, if, if you want to go this way, next month I'd also make a recommendation for an appointment of the hearing officer. And we conduct a hearing before that person. And it may be one day, it may be more. The hearing officer may say, okay, I'll give you X period of time to do A, B, and C, bring the person back if it's not done. But ultimately, if the hearing officer determines it's dangerous, depending on the conditions, okay, you can order the structure demolished, you can order that nobody can occupy it, you know, until certain corrections are made or things of that nature. And, they, and the hearing officer puts an order together. That person then can appeal to you and say, I think that's wrong. But typically I find that doesn't happen. Okay, once, once they've gone through and, and we you appoint as a hearing officer somebody that's very, very knowledgeable in, in construction. So 
it, I find it's very effective and a lot of times through the procedure you can actually get the repairs made but when you have a structure that is just terrible we have a couple that we really need to deal with we do. and I wanted I want to get this in place and start dealing with them so. and how does how is it that it's uh, these buildings are identified is it just simply maybe a, a resident <coughs> Call, sometimes sees it's one and says, oh my gosh, that's in horrible condition, or? Sometimes it's complaints, sometimes, for example, I mean, I, I think the two that we have, we have them because the tenants in there mm -hmm. have brought it to the attention of the township and the building official has gone over and realized how dangerous the structure really is. So. Okay, thank you. Mm. They're not easy to find. Right, they don't, they don't make it easy to find. But, <laughs> but understand, <laughs> I've used this you know, you can use this, I, I, you know, I use this to, for the barnstormers in Green Oak Township. Okay, that's how we dealt with that situation, which was an extremely dangerous commercial building, you know, so, and the process worked very well, so. I think we've had some people come in and, you know, we haven't really had a way to right. help them. Right. Um, perhaps some neighbors who have to look at something and that's, uh, so I, I definitely like that we have a, a procedure. Make a motion we move ordinance number 07-19 to second reading. I'll support. I have one question, um, but uh, the hearing officer that you mentioned, that is a board appointment or supervisor appointment? Uh, well, typically the supervisor does it, but since you're doing this new, I would probably, uh, I've got a suggestion for somebody, and I probably would bring some information to you for the you know, to the board with the, you know, he, with John making a recommendation okay. and the board voting on it. So that would occur in probably in like June. two months or June We would do it at the same meeting. time. At so same if, time when we second. adopt okay. the ordinance, we can go ahead and start moving on a couple of these structures. Okay. So. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on. Okay, consideration to authorize the award for the traffic study to be completed at Pontiac Trail and Martindale Road. And I think Leslie's put this together for us here. Uh, going to talk about it a little bit. Okay, so as you know, um, in, I think it was in November, we were awarded the design of Martindale Road just north of Pontiac Trail. And uh, we've completed the survey work, but we have not started on design. We had a kickoff meeting with the Road Commission and during different discussions, it basically became required that a traffic study was necessary for that intersection because at the kickoff meeting, the um, road commission <laughs> mentioned a roundabout and I was like, whoa, 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 that is not in our budget. I made that very clear. That wasn't in the estimate, wasn't even considered. And basically they said, well, you need a traffic study uh, to show what the immediate needs are for the intersection and what the 20-year projection is. So this took a little time because with Cider Mill Village, there was an application that was brought <coughs> in at Conceptual. There was no action, but the feedback was you know, pretty negative, really, that they needed to make some major changes. I don't know if Kent Lake Road is going to get realigned or if it's going to stay where it is. So generating even the RFP for a sub-consultant was a little bit tricky and took us a while because once we developed it, we went back to the road commission, made sure they agreed with the scope items, and we bid it to three companies um, that typically do more work for government than development, developers. Um, the two proposers were GHD and Bergman. Um, GHD was the traffic engineer that we worked with on Cider Mill Village. Um, and the price difference between the two is just under $1,700. Um, GHD was the high bidder at $9,670, and Bergman had a bid of $8,000. Because GHD was involved with Cider Mill Village, and I expect that there would be some type of resubmittal, I'm recommending them, but they're both very good firms. Um, and I think this is necessary to move that project forward. Uh, either way, we need some, we need a traffic consultant telling us what to do with that intersection right now. Um, and the then road, a 20 year projection. Why doesn't the road commission pay for this? Why are we doing that? Well, it, <coughs> we're working on that. 
just so you know, we, we are working on that. I'm trying to get the road commission to put some money into the kitty here. You know, we have strategy meetings with them and they tell us how it's great to be partners as long as they're initiating it. If we seem to initiate it, they don't seem to get involved so quickly. I have the same concern. Yeah. I have the same concern that Michelle has. I mean, it's their road and yeah. we want well, like to Like I say, fix we're it. working on it. And okay. Believe me, Leslie and I have had some nice conversations this week and uh, I think we're going to get they're gonna they're gonna come to the plate somehow I'm not sure exactly how yet and it is an ongoing conversation so this project is not this this road paving projects not happening this year I don't think so so there's no urgency can we table this and ask them to I would love step that up actually to, yeah if you could do that yeah. I would like I'll that. make a motion well, wait before yeah before you say it <laughs> no I fully agree with Michelle's comment too that I was a little surprised that they wanted us to pay for us to do a study for the privilege of paving the road. Um, I, you know, in all, all honesty, I understand the, the need, well, maybe not quite fully understand the need for it, but um, I, you know, given that there have been studies, ba you know, for the developments to the, the north of Twins, Twin Pines and Aspen, and, and you know, they're showing you know, less than a thousand cars coming through Martindale. I don't see how it would come to a roundabout, but it, it may. Um, but kind of this kind of mirrors the drain proposal too. What if it comes back with a roundabout? Are we then on the hook for that? That's, I, I, believe me, we've had, we're having some heated conversations. Or, or even a signal, I mean, I don't know. We don't know any of that yet. I will know more at the next meeting for sure. And the That's only thing, why I'd like a table for this because I'll have more to tell you. And the only other thing I would add to this scenarios is, um, you know, we had budgeted a signal at Kent Lake and Silver Lake Road without the, obviously without the realignment. Um, and I know that's kind of been postponed because of the Cider Mill Village thing. But um, just to make sure that that is, you know, part of the, the scenario as well, if that route was, was going. That's the route we would go. Yeah, that's warranted. That's been warranted. That intersection and is a yes. mess. And uh, I, I am of the opinion that we should just move ahead and signalize that intersection anyway. Well, at some could. point, but that, that's a discussion for a later date. I think it was in the put in the budget too. It was in the budget and in the capital improvements plan but, for this year. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, table this item, uh, the traffic study item for Pontiac Trail and Martindale Roads until next month. Till next month, yes. Okay. Support. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on to the resolution for authorizing the West Nile virus fund expense reimbursement request. We get this money back, and that's why we. Yeah, it's, it's, it's $921.44. Mm -hmm. So it's really a grant for Oakland County. Once you want, we have to pay for the purchase, and we purchased tablets because we still had plenty of wipes mm -hmm. left. And um, these are the tablets that go into your ponds. And so we purchased them, and now we have to do the resolution to ask for the dollars back. So that's what it is. Sounds good. And the applicants are, are the, the application of these tablets can be done by the residents, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they can pick them up yes, and absolutely. put them in. They're prepackaged. Yeah. Um, uh, they're for smaller standing yeah. waters yeah. and uh, ponds and or your bird baths or you know some kind of standing water and uh, we have it on our website and we have had multiple people to come in to get them um, some are repeat customers some are new and while we pass those out we also um, Melanie actually takes care of that but we also offer the wipes and some other <coughs> trinket things that we've gotten from other departments so nice, it's a grant, yep. so we're great. not are costing those, the residents anything. Are those yep. the wipes that we had in the basket yes. up front? Oh yep. my gosh, I know so many people yep. who, when they come up to the township mm -hmm. hall to do any kind of random, you know, uh, daily business of some sort, they take them. They, the residents love those. We yeah, also great. have the little dog reflectors, so if you walk your dogs, mm -hmm. um, you can put them on your collar. Uh, and the bicycle reflector. So mm -hmm. um, we do a good job with pa passing those things out when um, residents come in to ask or, you know, they like them. So 
I'll make That's a motion to. Oops, sorry, you ready? Yep. <laughs> no. I'll make a motion to approve res, uh, resolution number 2019-15 to authorize West Nile virus fund expense reimbursement. Request. Okay, did you support that, John? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> Moving on, here's the security system we've been waiting on. I've been, actually Melanie has really been doing a lot of work for me on getting these costs together. And this is probably still a little ways from <coughs> where I want to be. Um, I'm still looking over some things, but I, I'll tell you, everything changes every day on this. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to someone and, and like I think it was Lieutenant said, uh, you know, it would really be a good idea in the security system is if you have a camera down the hallway, we can put a monitor in front of John Cool down in the desk. So if any problems happen, they can see it happening. They go, that's something we didn't think about. So there's still things. This is, this is really a nice system, and we had all three bidders bid it the same way. We had all-star alarms. They're out of Whitmore Lake. <coughs> um, I'm not sure where ASC is. Johnson Controls is... Uh, was the high end, and that one I think is way too way too much money. This uh, ASC is the same outfit that uh, Chief had do the two fire stations. So, and I'm not sure, Chief. I don't know if you want to come. Do were you happy with? I am not familiar with ASC. He was very a good salesperson. He talked real well, but he did your systems on both fire stations. So I was any trouble with him, or was he? No, there. And, and that again, that's the kind of things I want to sit down. This, this was the initial cost. I wanted the board to get an idea of the cost of this, um, to see that it's going to be, it's, it's not just a few grand, it's many grand. Um, but I, I still think I'd like to sit down with the chief and, and the lieutenant and, and kind of get a feel for what we have proposed here and if it's similar to what they think that we need before we make this decision. Um, but I'm going to tell you, these three guys right here, I don't really believe we could go wrong with any one of them. I, I do think the, the ASC I'm pushing a little more towards, um, only because he seemed much more knowledgeable and he seemed to know what we wanted and was willing to work with us. And basically, I'm, I'm asking just for a conversation on this. Do you, do you, does anyone here have any like request? What you think? If you look through here, these are, these are doors that automatically open and close and lock themselves. They, when you, it'll be a card read. Everyone will have ID with pictured ID that uses the, the doors. When they swipe the card in the door, it shoots a picture of the person that swipes the card so you know it's the person that's supposed to be here. It uh, keeps track of the time they come and go. We also put cameras around the entire outside of the building, and we also did the Craigslist. I, I remember you guys talked yeah. about that. Yeah. We had a, an, a, a push for <coughs> Craigslist people with a camera shooting yeah. on them. Um, we didn't put cameras in this room, but we did put a camera out on the hallway there to shoot the hallway for the residents that come in. Sometimes they get a little bit aggravated, I should say. And sometimes on camera, it's tends to make it a little harder to get aggravated. So things like that, we have a lot of panic buttons along the, the, the desk in the front so the, the gals can push a panic button if they need to and it, it'll radio down to the lieutenants. Um, I think we've covered a lot of things. It gives us the contract for monitoring it here. It shows you the yearly charge on the all three. Uh, warranties were extra on the one but they included on the others. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any, if you have any suggestions. Would you? I know you haven't had time to really look it over, and I, I think maybe I'd like to talk about this at the next meeting, where you guys can kind of go ahead and look through this a little bit, and then give me some ideas if you think. I know it's hard to, to look at this and understand where we have things going, but I believe there was nine cameras. I'm trying to remember how many cameras we had. Some we had pretty much the entire exterior of the building covered. Um, and I think the doors were all covered. We even had doors going through to the office on the card reads. So now you'd all get your badge and you'd be able to swipe it and walk in and it keeps track of who walks through. 
So I'd like you to do that if you could. Just go ahead and, and look this over. And if there's anything, any questions you have, you can let me know if there's anything that you think we should have. Maybe it's on here, maybe it isn't, but I'd like to know. I have a couple questions. Um, what other municipalities have systems like this? Um, I haven't seen a lot, actually. Green Oak has it. But they don't have the key doors, do they? Uh, I, I mean, I, Carol, I think this they, one's a little yeah. higher end than. No, do they not? I don't have an ID. I just no. walk in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This will be this will be kind of forward thinking. I mean. And how did the the description <clears throat> items, like the laundry list, how did that get built? Was it? That we actually did a specification. And you know what I'll do is I'll email you that specification. I'll go ahead and email you that, okay. and then you guys can look at how we put the spec together, and we had everybody bid on the same spec. Right. Now, the specification, they have different cameras, different operating computers, and so it changes the price a little bit. Well, I guess my, I, my question was, you know, how did it come to decide that you, we were going to have, you know, six panic alarm buttons, and, you know, where, well, where did because the thought, did you sit down with absolutely. Senate Venus and say, look, these are the types of things that we should really have if we're going to have a security system, these are the things that we should absolutely. have? Absolutely. In okay. the front, the buttons in the front are critical, and, and there couldn't be enough of them. You know, the, I, I mean, I know I've shared that <coughs> working in a high school and um, we have security cameras everywhere. Um, I have a security camera right outside of my classroom door. Um, I just am a lucky one uh, who gets it right there. But um, you know, I, I do think that sometimes those security cameras do create a level of, of comfort that if something were to go wrong or somebody were to be irate, that, uh, that sometimes will have a, cal a calming effect on their, their reaction. So um, I just didn't know where. Well, we also had a, the, the one gentleman put together a nice drawing where he showed where the cameras were going to be located. I'll send you that too. Okay. And then that way you guys can all look that over and see if you want to add cameras, delete cameras, and then we can reprice this out that way. And I'll also get with the chief and the lieutenant and we'll figure out too. I would just add that if you're, going, if you're thinking about investing in certain items, do it up front uh, because if you start doing an a la carte, right. that's when it gets really Yeah, that's gr that's great. That's a good thought. Harvard for each kind of starter <laughs> system for fifty nine bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that that uh, I'm going to send all that information to you. You'll see the specifications and how they come across and the different and uh, the drawing of where the one that put all the cameras. Okay, does that sound fair? So we send that out to you. This is not something we have to do immediately. It's just, it's something I've wanted to do since we've been here. Yeah, it's been in the budget. And, and it's just, it. yeah. I've had so many other things I've been working on, I haven't had a chance to get to, to it. Is it, it has been in our budget for the oh, yeah. Okay. It is in the budget, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think it's been in there a long, long time. What was the budgeted amount? I think like $40,000. I think it was 60. It was a larger, I think it was 60. Yeah. Was it, I thought it was 100. <laughs> well, the 100 included some other things. It, okay, that was, that the whole. Yes, the 60 remember. was just the security system. Okay. The 100 was, was surface air, surface <laughs> air missiles on the roof, just in case. But the, Iron yeah. Dome, I'm sorry. It was Iron Dome. <clears throat> so this is a good thing. We got to start on it anyway, and, and we'll get some uh, get some opinions from you guys on how you want to go about it. And John, have you had, and I don't know, you don't have to answer this, but has, answer. have there been some Rather serious incidents. A couple. Recent, okay. It was a couple. I just, yeah, we don't like it. Yeah, we don't want to say it on, you know. You know, at any given time, it's 99% it's all women. So yes. it can be frightful when you get an aggressive person. And, yeah. um, and you know, we're yelling for John <coughs> or downstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's busy, they hear it. And, you know, we call the sheriff downstairs. But I have had someone throw their keys at me as a is a municipal engineer. Interesting. But, but the other thing that we encounter too yes. is that with a keyed system like we have, the keys are out there everywhere. We don't even, you know, we've got all these board members that have keys. We don't know where they go. Even though they're secured keys that you're not supposed to reproduce on, who knows? The locksmiths can reproduce these things easily. So this would take away a keyed scenario. And I also would like to get the, the water plants and the sewage sure. plants and everything kind of yeah. all into one deal where yeah. they're all very secure and I'm working on that too and that that could be another
piece of this puzzle, we could put it all together and it could be a discounted rate because sure. it's going to need a lot. Yeah. You know? John, I do have a question here with the interior video surveillance cameras. Um, I was just curious mm -hmm. if those, if you can ask, um, will those have the ability to pick up sound or are they only um, visual? And I just know the difference that the, um, in my school where we, the old cameras had no sound, the new cameras, you can get sound um, and isolate that sound. So I know that in some cases it's been helpful and I just didn't know if you had those. I think they um, probably do. I mean, these are <clears throat> these are really the upgraded everything. I mean, we got the yeah, top, but that's a good question. I didn't ask that, but I will. You know, the only thing I would say is in the general, like, public areas, I would say that's good. But if I was an employee, I certainly wouldn't want a camera near me that had sound and picking it up. So, you know, right. when I start talking to myself, people are like, wow, did you hear he talked to himself for five straight minutes? Like, I think that's going to make probably people here feel uncomfortable. So I think we have to be mindful of. Because I mean, it can be, like there's a fine line between like securing areas. and being it's in the hallways. intrusive. Yeah. Right. We're, we're shooting so the hallways, think, and the hallways are okay. just in case somebody breaks in and right. they walk down, the, you know, that's where they're going to be. So I just, yeah, we're I just not don't shooting want anybody working here to be uncomfortable with it. Like, no. we're trying to see what they're doing right. at all, every second of every day or something. Because that's not what any of us are trying to do. No, not at all. Okay, will we go with that? I'll, I'll send that out to you and we can right. get that. And like I said, it's not a real rush, but I'd like to get some input now that we yeah. got it moving. And yeah. Okay. So, so that's that's just an update, John, or do you want a motion? Yeah, I don't want a motion okay. on that yet. Let, let's just we can table that. If you want to table that off until next month, you want me to? Yeah. Why don't All we right. do that? I'll make a motion to table uh, the request to consider the purchase of a security system for Township Hall until the June meeting. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Uh, moving on to the items removed from the consent agenda. Yeah, we have an item discuss packets. Oh, that's right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got, yep. you got that right. Okay. That's Chris, that's you anyway. No, oh, the packet discussion? Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess we've talked about this before, and I know things were a little hectic this last week, um, but if it's to help hopefully get us enough time to review everything, I just really try and want to have a discussion on the policy to have like you know if it's a week before the Wednesday before the meetings are done that the agenda and everything's loaded in the packet that would just be very helpful um, and uh, you know whatever date time is is works for you for for the board just I know there's a lot of stuff um, that's got to get put together and I don't want you you know somebody coming in at the last minute and trying to rush something on and if we have something in writing that says, hey, no, you missed it, sorry, yeah. that gives but us a little always, more. There's always an emergency cheap. or there's always something that comes up. And I mean, it's hard to tell someone no. There's a few things that needed to come on this packet, but we just didn't have time to even get anything ready for it. So they're going to be pushed to June. So they, you know, you try to make it as much as I'd love to say, this is the drop dead date, it never happens. I mean, we just have such a hard time with that. And again, maybe a policy is what's needed, but if you break the f policy, what happens? Do I get to beat someone? Do I just <laughs> punch myself? I mean, I don't- They I have just, to buy you know, a lunch? I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's hard because we're, you know, this, this business doesn't stop and it's mm -hmm. just something that, I mean, it's just always moving parts and I took well, a vacation and that didn't help, so. I guess my, you know, <laughs> again, I'll, I'll mention with the situation with Tina, and, and I emailed her, I think it was last night, and then this morning she had responded and Catherine responded, and then Tina wrote a firm email to uh, our, contractor. our contractor, and literally with, like, by the end of this afternoon when I tried to access, I think they already started again in, because they just started populating and, you know, the pluses were, were going up. Okay. Um, and so, you know, if I had, if I had known, like sometimes I'll go in there and I'll explore the packets even before yeah. we get our agenda. Sure. And then I don't know that something has been added. So I'm always going back and going back and double checking. And I mean, certainly with the response that they gave to you and getting those pack started to upload those packets, I would have been able to... Um, no, you know, I might have had Friday to, to look at them some sure. more, or Saturday or Sunday. And, right. And so I know that you don't want to be the bad guy, but like 
Yeah, we have to it's, because it's too hard for everybody to have all of their information. And I know people went out of town and had other things to do. And as summer comes, people are going to get busier on the weekend. Right. So you don't want to be tied to your packet on the weekend. I right. get that. So, so guess, that Monday before to me is the drop dead date, but we just had so many things going on and this packet just did not come together. We were waiting yeah. for signatures, we were waiting for this and you know, we're just pulling our hair out. So right. I feel bad and I do apologize. No, I, I, I want to make it sure it was like all these parts were just not coming together. I want to find something that can empower you to mm -hmm. be able to say no, yeah. like you, this yeah. you knew the deadline and this and it's you missed the deadline it. and that Sorry, way, the deadline for next month's packet is tomorrow and if you don't have any <laughs> <laughs> I got four new I got four items that were tabled so I have them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were trying to find historical information, right? But you were able to find 2019, like the existing. Well, no, I, I could find the existing packet, but then it, then it wouldn't load, and so like I'd get through maybe some, you know, four pages into a 17-page, you know, minutes, and it just kept cycling and cycling and cycling. I take my kids off of everything, it's like get off the internet. But I couldn't get. Could you also just, if you have that problem, let us know right away, and then I can email it to you because I have it in hard copy. So, but I hate to do that for everybody. If well, because this is the at 5:45, I didn't think you wanted to hear get, hear that from me today. Oh, that's a good point because it, it, it could either be an issue on our side or like I, I know like in our house, right? We we do start kicking everybody off the data to make sure right. that we can download because I'm not sure how large those. And I, that's what I was trying to go back into the historical packets to find, we'll you know, find a route around Well, just something it, that Michelle can oh use to say, hey, oh, this is... Because yeah. I know what she's saying, though, because we do that, but things happen. They just happen. Yeah, it's, like it's I, an emergency. I was guilty of one of them this month. Yeah. She asked me when they treatment I put plan. another thing on the packet? Because yeah, I wanted sure that sign, <laughs> you know? And we didn't get that until Thursday. Well, Thursday, you so. would not pass my no late policy in the classroom. <laughs> Yeah. So that's, that's can I ask a question? And we're gonna, we'll yes. try hard to make sure it gets the goal there. I know is you've said that before too, Sean. Well, and I, yeah, and I mean, okay. I, and it's not, definitely not, it's nothing that, I mean, you guys no, are we, busy. And we're all know, trying I, very I, hard, and April's pulling her hair out. And then on top of it, we <laughs> didn't know, I still don't know how to load this new meeting on our end yet. April sure. and Catherine and, thank God, we, Tina do. We did so they helped me, but I didn't get to it, so right. I will. And I would just. We did a step-by-step instruction. I don't know what's going on here every day, and I know you guys are doing everything I think I would agree that it's just what can we yeah. do to help you okay. because everyone's coming to you and you know oh, you want to get everything because I mean obviously yep. things I, are going to come I, one I offered to say another. that the um, supervisor and treasurer should take over the meeting packet now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you need support. <laughs> oh. I promise you we will work on that. <laughs> All right let's move on to the are you done with that Chris are you satisfied? Okay. Yeah, well, I will. I'm going to try to. See I will stick help. to my guns as best as possible, unless it's Carol. <laughs> an extra well, item that's on. okay. I mean, yeah, but I mean, if there's know. like just something yes. that you have a hammer to say, no, hey, I really you guys like it to be Monday do that before, too. so we are loaded. Just blame us all. Yeah. We hammer yeah. a lot of people. No, no, no. no, no. Why don't you just refer to the minutes from tonight's meeting? Okay. 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 Let's get to the to the item removed from the consent agenda. Go ahead, Chris. Okay, um, I had a, just a couple questions on those easements. Um, the easements presented are blank. Is this so? Typically, when we have easements in the consent, they're for us to accept them. Is this just? I, I guess what's our action on these? This was came from the letter. Well, I, do you want me to explain yeah, it in the background? Sure. Okay, so these are the ITC easements that are required for the Windridge Devonshire connection as well as the off site water and sewer. And it covers the pathway, and there are all these different documents in here. So these are ITCs, what they will agree to. Um, and they're, they, I don't think there's much room for negotiation in this. Um, this is kind of what it is if you want these facilities within their property. The ITC actually owns the properties in this case. There's two different parcels, one that fronts on Eight Mile, one that fronts on uh, Napier that's in between the Windridge and Devonshire. There's a road connect connection through that one that's off of Napier as well as a pathway along the frontage of Napier. So this is kind of their standard form for each of the individual easements, and then it would be executed. These were not in the township standard form, as you see, they're quite Correct. 
<laughs> complicated and and that is why they we placed them in the consent agenda because they were very unusual. And Beth has reviewed all of these yes. from our office. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have other ITC towers that's been existing. Yes. Um, that aren't covered by this. I mean, they must have had some kind of an agreement with them. Well, this one. Why this is different is in this case, ITC owns the land. It's not their facilities and an easement on somebody else's property. And so when they're the landowner, they have very strict requirements, as you see. Well, you can understand. Sure. We know all about the grid. Right. When it went down, I can definitely the whole, All of Southeast it. Michigan was out of power. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's my understanding that these items are non-negotiable, including the insurance policy. I think that is a very fair um, assessment. Yes. Yep. <coughs> and then just uh, for the water main easement, the legal description will need to be added to that. And that that's my comments. You good with that, Leslie? You can add mm -hmm. that to it. Okay. Yep. Are you mm -hmm. satisfied, Chris? question about the item on page two, the last bullet item, that the township is required to provide police protection to maintain law and order on the path as necessary. Are they asking for that to be patrolled like we do on the, the bike path? I don't think it's, it goes that far, but... Is it response to an incident? It, that's really more yeah, what that's it is. Right. Which they would anyway. Anyway, yeah. right. Which we would do anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're a taxpayer. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I had previously had to work with ITC on some easements actually earlier this year for a second time in another community that they have facilities in and uh, this is this is how it went there too. That's how it always they goes. just tell you what they're gonna let you do if you wanna use their property and kind of how it's gone. They're kind of uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So do we wanna make a motion to approve that? So moved. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Let's go ahead and make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, All those in favor say aye. We second it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We second it. Okay. Motion to adjourn at 9 o'clock on the dock. Good meeting. What's that? Yeah. A lot.